Greetings, everyone, and welcome. My name is Dr. Lori Laws, and I am a nurse, author, and trauma burnout expert who is here today to talk to you about a recent Medscape article written by Jody Hilmer that's titled Recruiting Nursing Students, New Approaches to Filling the Healthcare Gap. In the midst of a nationwide and actually an international nursing shortage, healthcare facilities are grappling with the challenge of filling, at least here in the US, an estimated 193,000 nurse job openings. Hospitals and outpatient clinics are resorting to various incentives to help increase salaries or signing bonuses or in enhancing the benefits package to attack, attract and retain nursing staff. However, the long-term solution in the nursing shortage lies in the enrolling in and investing in the next generation of registered nurses who are attending or will be attending nursing school. So in this episode, we're going to delve into some of these innovative strategies that are being employed while also looking at what isn't, maybe maybe we don't necessarily, depending upon whose studies you read, that maybe we don't have a nursing shortage. What we have technically is a shortage and that represents the unwillingness, a rightful refusal of today's nurses to work in unsafe, understaffed, under-resourced, and often violent workplace settings. Nurses are waking up to the fact that they are being traumatized in their roles. Nurse-specific traumatization, it is a thing. And nurses are responding to this often avoidable phenomenon by tapping out of the profession altogether. As we explore the landscape of nursing education and recruitment, it becomes evident that traditional approaches are being complemented by creative and forward-thinking strategies to attract diverse groups of students to the profession. And I applaud those efforts from dual degree programs to direct entry, um, master of science nursing programs, schools are adapting to meet the needs of the changing healthcare environment. And I certainly am among those as a nurse educator that is teaching in an accelerated program that has a practice focus of integrative health. So I am right here in the trenches doing all of this innovative work and strategies to attract and retrain, retain excellent nursing school candidates who soon in four short semesters here in the US become, become registered nurses, right? But, but none of these strategies, none of these strategies to attract a diverse pool of, of nursing students really gets at the root cause of why, <laughs> of why we are having such a challenge. None of these strategies get to the root cause of nurse vacancies, the mass exodus of nurses leaving the profession. Excellent nurses. Nursing schools can and we do educate fantastic new nurse graduates. But what we can't do as nurse educators, as nursing schools, what we can't do is pre prepare our students for the trifecta of trauma that they will encounter as soon as they pass their licensure exam and enter practice. Now, for those of you who are just joining us, I call this trifecta of trauma, and we'll drop a, a, a graphic for you in the show notes. Um, it is it is really the the trifecta is the individual traumas that each and every nursing student, every nurse has experienced in their personal life. By virtue of being human, we all embody and have some degree of unhealedness around those traumatic events. And then we have the unavoidable nurse specific traumatization. And this is um, so like second victim trauma or, or, or trauma disaster related traumas, right? That we have been trained and are supported in to address those in our roles. And then there's the whole layer of avoidable 
nurse specific traumatization. And these are often secondary to healthcare system and organizational inadequacies, such as short staffing, under resourced, uh, violent or toxic workplaces. So from, from my lens and the five years of research that I have conducted over four disciplines, the trifecta of trauma is the single most important factor that deters nurses from entering or staying in the profession. You know, in, in today's social media climate, nurses are very open about their experiences and potential new nurses or nursing students are hearing about these accounts and and really questioning if if they want to be subjected to these harsh working conditions. So as a seasoned nurse educator, I can attest to the fact that the American Association College of Nurses Nursing's Essentials offers zero guidance in preparing nurses for this trifecta of trauma that is literally driving nurses from the profession. It is a silent epidemic that is happening on an international level. Sure, in, in the AACN essentials, there are very strong guidelines for the usual self-care and, and resilience and longevity and professionalism and all, all of those necessary educational trainings for our nurses. But none of those, none of those address the root cause where nurse safety professional well-being, and role longevity is concerned. It's like as a nurse educator, and I am eyeball deep in, in curriculum redevelopment with a lot to align with the new competency-based essentials as a nurse educator. So I've, I'm, my sleeves are rolled up. <laughs> I am doing the work along with my colleagues. Um, it feels like building a new house on a crumbling foundation, if I'm to be perfectly honest, and I mean no disrespect to anyone. It's just that that we have missed this. We have missed how nurses are being traumatized in their roles, often systematically by healthcare systems and organizations. And so if we don't address that, then we are really going to continue to have challenges. We need education and training so that Future nurses and current nurses can learn the language of their own autonomic nervous system and vagus nerve so that they can address the substantial tra tra trifecta of trauma exposure, try saying that once, <laughs> that quickly becomes unmanageable and is depleting to all bodily systems right down to the level of the mitochondria. When you really start examining this, as I have done, you can see how profoundly nurses are being affected. And when you start looking at that, at the um, body system and the cells and subcellular organelles, then you really get a, a whole different perspective of why nurses are leaving. Because physiologically, Nurses and no human is equipped to endure, let alone thrive, in this degree of trauma exposure and traumatization. We we just are not, we are we are blowing through people's resistance mechanisms, their coping mechanisms, to the point where the ATP um, start getting shut down because they cannot keep up with energy production. And this is drawing from Dr. Robert Navio's cell danger response theory, which I, I highly encourage you to, to follow his work if you want to raise your mitochondria geek flag as I am doing right now. So all the self-care and resilience development strategies that don't explicitly address nurse-specific traumatization, how to prevent it and how to address it if you're affected. Well, it's just a recipe for more burnout, more nurse PTSD, and more nurse attrition. So this Medscape article goes on to cite that nurse faculty shortages are a factor, and indeed this is accurate. I mean, everything in the article was accurate, but we're, we're missing. It's, it's really missing 
the the key <laughs> the key to all of this is is really addressing this nurse specific traumatization all right it's accurate that nursing schools are turning away approximately 66,000 qualified applicants each year and it's true that the same old narrative regarding well we don't have enough budget um, we, you know, a lot of people, there's a pay gap differential between those nurse educators and those nurses in practice. And I feel that <laughs> I'm earning tens of thousands of dollars less than my, my colleagues, um, despite, despite having attained a higher educational level and the nature of my job. So um, I, I feel the sting of what this article, I live the sting of this and my wages, like many are not keeping up with inflation. All right, so it's all true. Um, the pay gaps between um, educators and practitioners, the lack of clinical sites, that is true. Limited classroom space, yes. Shortage of clinical preceptors, yes, this persists. And these are all challenges that we must address. Yet this Medscape article failed to report that nurse educators also are experiencing nurse-specific traumatization in their roles as well. This phenomenon is so pervasive and so systemic and embedded in work cultures and systems that it's going unnoticed. And that's why it's a silent epidemic. So we will drop another image in the show notes for you that shows the spectrum of both individual traumas and then avoidable and unavoidable nurse-specific traumas that every nurse is presented with. And boy, it's a boatload. It's a boatload. So as nurse educators, we are enduring all forms of nurse-specific traumatization like vicarious trauma. Well, we suffer along with our patients, I mean, with our students and their patients, right? And um, we also are affected by the historical trauma, this, this sort of nurses eat their own um, bullying or hazing culture. I mean, I remember when I was in nursing school and, and with humility, I was a 4.0 student um, all the way through and I worked very hard um, to, do, to do my very best and be my very best nurse. And yet when it would come to um, morning uh, preceptor shifts, Nobody wanted me. And they made it very clear that nobody wanted a student. Nobody wanted a student. I just can't. And I am not blaming these nurses. They were already understaffed and under-resourced. And taking a student presented a hardship for them. I get it. I did not take it personally then, nor did I take it. do I take it personally now. But that is the reality. And as uh, it's demoralizing. It's demoralizing for a nursing student to feel unwanted and unvalued. Um, then we have all sorts of workplace uh, violence, even as nurse educators. Uh, there is no lack of bullying, gaslighting, and incivilities in academia. And uh, we also have system-induced trauma. Institutions of higher education create a lot of trauma, just as institutions of healthcare delivery do. And uh, we are sorely understaffed and under-resourced. So this, this phenomenon, this nurse-specific phenomenon affects all nurses independent of their practice setting. Now there is legislation such as the recently proposed Nurse Faculty Shortage Reduction Act. And this, this legislation takes kind of this show me the money approach to addressing the issue. Yes, there is a clinician educator wage gap that needs to be addressed. There shouldn't be a median salary differential of over $32,000 between advanced practice nurses and nursing professors. In my own personal case, I am doctorally prepared. Every year I am losing $32,000 in, um, in wages. It has cost me in the last decade $320,000 in lost wages, not to mention lost retirement contributions and differentials. So this absolutely needs to be addressed, but money is not the root cause of why we are having a hard time attracting and retaining nursing students 
and nurses until we address the systematic nurse-specific traumatization epidemic that is occurring globally, the nursing profession and our patients will continue to suffer. I don't know how to say it any more clearly than that. With humility and so much respect, I, I must challenge a quote that was offered by Dr. Linda Plank, who is a PhD RN and then she's NEABC or her credentials. And she was quoted in this Medscape article as saying, the healthcare field needs more nurses. Nursing schools have a huge responsibility in trying to help out with the nursing shortage. Well, that really, that really landed with me. I mean, I can't help but wonder why the responsibility for literally everything falls on the backs and the shoulders of already overworked, burned out, and traumatized nurses. Why are we not calling into that responsibility equation the healthcare organizations, our healthcare partners that are systematically inflicting avoidable nurse-specific trauma on a global workforce? Why aren't they too hugely responsible? Dr. Plank's statement resonates as another statement in the long-standing narrative surrounding nurse historical trauma. Nurses need to fix this. Nurses need to fix that. Nurses need to be more resilient. Nurses need to manage their stress better. Where is the healthcare system and organizational accountability and responsibility to create safe, well-resourced, practice settings so nurses can thrive in their practice, which we know, we know there's mountains of evidence that suggest that when nurses are safe, healthy, and thriving, that that translates to improve patient safety, outcomes, and quality of care. And it contributes to the organization's bottom line. It is literally in everyone's best interest to address nurse-specific traumatization. It's not just the nursing school's responsibility to help with the nursing shortage. I say to, to the global narrative, stop blaming the victim by unduly placing responsibility on nurses for healthcare system and or organizational inadequacies that are out of their purview and control. It's the healthcare system's responsibility to provide safe working condition. It is the healthcare system, their responsibility to have structures and processes in place to prevent avoidable nurse specific traumatization. It is the healthcare system's responsibility to provide resources and supports for nurses who are experiencing nurse specific traumatization. So please stop blaming the nurses by implicitly placing the burden of the nursing shortage on our shoulders when the bulk of that responsibility should fall squarely on the shoulders of healthcare systems and organizations for that is where the root cause of the problem lies. So in other words, please just stop. Just stop gaslighting nurses at every turn. That in and of itself is a form of avoidable nurse-specific traumatization. It's a form of covert manipulation that results in self-doubt, low self-esteem, anxiety, and confusion. Please place the responsibility where it belongs. And let's then see how nurses thrive instead of merely surviving in their practices. So in conclusion, if you or someone you know has experienced any form of nurse-specific traumatization, I urge you to take action now. Please consider attending my Nurse Trauma Masterclass, or you can schedule a call to meet with me one-on-one -on -one to start the healing process. You can learn everything about my work, most of which is situated in a nonprofit. Well, all of it is a nonprofit <laughs> work. Even the proceeds of the book that I have coming out are going to the nonprofit organization that I founded and direct, the Halen Academy. So you can visit drlorilaws.com to learn more. 
Until next time, please know that I see you, I feel you, I hear you, and I am here for you. Thank you for all that you are and all that you do from my healer's heart to yours. And until next time, namaste.